we started by looking at um, the introduction to programming, the programming languages. Uh, we looked at the differences or the similarities between programming languages and natural languages. We went further to look at the um, evolution of programming languages. Okay. And then we last or the past two weeks, we our focus was on algorithms and flowcharts, where week two we looked at how the theory okay, behind the algorithm, the theory and the logic behind the algorithms and flowcharts, the shapes or the the symbols that we can use to draw the flowchart, we talked about that. And then last week we took some examples. Okay, I think the full timers we did about three, three each on the, uh, the three control structures. That is the sequential or the sequence, the branching or the decision-making control structures. And then the uh, looping control structures. Okay, however, with the food, the part timers, we, because of time, we were able to do only two. That is the sequence and then the uh, looping control structures. Okay, uh, sorry, the sequence and the branching control structures. We didn't get enough time to look at the looping. Okay, so we are going to. For the part timers, when we get to the chapter five, which is control structures, we will take time to look at the looping algorithm again, and then we'll try to implement the programs to uh, execute those control uh, structures. Okay. All right. Um, so today we are looking at we are done with algorithms. So today our focus is going to be more on the, um, the programming language itself, which is the C++ programming language. The C++ programming language. Okay. Uh, but we'll take it from the general concept of uh, programming languages. Okay, programming languages in general, the general concept of programming language. Now, um, if you remember during our first lecture or so, I talked about um, the difficulty or, or which programming languages are difficult to learn. Okay, and uh, there's a chat just on what I was talking about. So we have first and foremost uh, HTML and CSS, uh, which is 25% from the statistics, JavaScript being 55%. Uh, Kotlin, Kotlin is a language. Um, Shalon, Ashi, kindly, uh, please don't write on the screen. Eh? We have a Kotlin, which is more of a programming language. Uh, for developing mobile application, uh, which is considered or its level of difficulty is at 65%, then Python at 45%, then C++ at 85%, and then uh, Java programming language at 75%, okay? Now, uh, just a minute. A minute. I 
All right, so let's go on. Uh, please, uh, do we have part timers on the joining the session? If you are part timer, you can raise your hand. If you are in the part time class. Okay, all right, thank you. You can lower your hand now. Uh, your class rep just called me, so I was, he was asking for the link. So I thought the part-timers have not joined because we've shared it with Stovey already earlier. Okay, thank you. You can lower your hands now. <laughs> Okay, so ten of cameras. All right, so let's continue. All right, so I was talking about the difficulty in programming languages. And then Java, we have 75%. Um, okay, now our focus here will be on C programming. Okay, now C programming. Uh, is considered to be one of the difficult programming languages to learn, okay? And uh, almost every academic institution that I know of, okay, begin their programming uh, syllabus, okay, with B++ programming language, okay? And based on research, it is advisable that you Starts with the most difficult language, and then gradually you transition into the uh, ones that are less difficult. Okay, so at the moment we are starting with C plus plus. Next semester we move into Java, and then in that um, in that order. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, C plus plus is difficult, but uh, as much as possible, we try to try to make it simple for everyone in the class to understand. Okay. All right. Uh, please, we, uh, we don't need your videos to be on. We don't need your microphone also to be on. Uh, usually, the videos tend to distract the class. Okay, so please. Turn it off. Your microphones off as well. All right. So back to our material for today. Today we are looking at the basic elements of C, C++ program or of a C++ program. Now, before you write a program, you should have gone through the concept of writing an algorithm and understanding that concept, okay, which we've done already. Now, a C++ program follows a particular sequence okay, of statements, and those sequences uh, can easily be understood when you understand the concept of an algorithm. Okay. Now, with this sequence, there are elements which you should know, okay? Different, different elements which you should know and know as and when these elements are used, okay? As and when these elements are used. Now let's go through the material. Uh, if you have your hand out with you, you can go with me. All right, so 
It says a computer program or a program is a sequence of statements whose objective is to accomplish a task. Okay. Now, programming is a process of planning and creating a program. Okay. Now, I remember, um, I think one of our first meetings, someone asked the question, what's the difference between uh, programming and coding? Okay, coding are the text that we see, okay, people write. But programming is made up of the text, the code that we see people write, uh, debugging the code or correcting the error in the code, and then running the code and all the processes, okay? But coding is just uh, writing out the text of the program, okay? So, um, sir, please, again, 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 sir, please, again. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Yes, sir. Please, uh, if you have a question, kindly raise your me. hand and then you'll be allowed, okay? When you do that, you, the whole session is being recorded, okay? So that anytime oh. you go back to listen to it, you can follow. But when you do that, you interrupt whatever we are doing. You are and okay. you raise your hand and then you'll be allowed to ask the question. So like I said, coding has to do with the text that is being written or the instructions that are being written. Okay. And then the um, programming is the entire process because when you write the code, you have to debug it. Debugging means you are checking for errors and correcting those errors. Then after doing that, you have to compile and then run the program, okay? However, coding is the concept of just writing the instructions. Okay, just writing the instructions, okay? So for instance, you have your platform, or let me say the editor. You have the editor, okay? The editor is where you write your line of instructions, okay? Your line of instruction, the code that you have written. Okay. Now, inside the editor, there would be a button which will run your application, okay? There are other buttons which will compile the application. There are other buttons that you can use to debug, okay? Check for error, okay? Now, just writing this code, okay? We call it the code. Just by doing this, we call it your coding. Now, when you add the concept of debugging and compiling the code and running the code together with what you have here, we call that programming. Call that programming. Okay. So programming is the entire concept of coding and debugging the code running the code, compiling the code. Okay. Now, just from this diagram here, okay, that's what we call ID. I think I mentioned it in one of the classes, okay, which is the integrated development environment. Okay, integrated development environment. Now, this ID, let me type it here, integrated development environment. Okay. Now, if we say something is an integrated development environment, it means that that environment consists of certain um, attributes, okay? 
there could be a compiler there, okay, it has a compiler or an interpreter there. Okay, I am not sure what to ask. I am not sure what Mute your mics. So it can have a compiler or an interpreter, okay? So compiler or an interpreter one, the IDE, also has what we call an editor, okay? It has an editor, okay? Then there are other features. So debugging, other features for debugging. Okay? And then, uh, yeah. And then I think there's also a, um, the console platform or the terminal. Maybe I'm calling me do the a terminal. Okay. Now, the ID, okay, the ID is just an environment, an environment. Okay. A typical example, let me just uh, open some IDs for you to see. Okay. Um, let me open some IDs for you to see. And then I'll talk about all of them. The, the man, I want to know if he's, he's talking. I want to know. The thing shows that he's talking. Please, when you join, kindly mute yourself and turn off your videos. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see video of anyone bare chested and all that. So please know that you are fresh. You don't want to see your face and your chest, please. All right, so uh, let me place the IDs here. Then I'll take them one after the other. So I've opened a couple of IDs. Uh, let me add the last one, maybe uh, VS Code. All right, so I'll take them one by one. Okay. All right, so 
Um, let me start with Dev C++. Okay. Now, this, I hope you can see the interface. If you can see, just type yes in the chat. Okay. So the first interface we see now is the Dev C++. Um, that is the that is an ID for writing C++ program. Okay, C and C++ program. Okay, so it's an ID or it's an environment where you can write C and C++ program. Now, it's more like a software. Okay, it's a software for writing a program in C and C++. And like I said, every ID has features, features like an editor, a compiler or an interpreter, features like debugging features, uh, a terminal or a console for writing, uh, for running your application and so on, okay? So if we take Dev C++, it is for C and C++ programming. Okay. Now, if you see here, I go to new and what? New source file or project, whichever one you want to do, you can create a project. Okay. Then the project, depending on how you want it, maybe I want an empty project. Okay. I give it a name, save it somewhere. Okay. And then it gives me this interface. Now the interface here is what we call the editor. Okay, this interface is what we call the editor. And this is what we call the editor. Okay. Now the editor is where you run or you write your code or the instruction you have. So with the editor, what happens is that it numbers every line of instruction. It numbers every line of instruction that you give it. Okay, going forward, I'll tell you why this numbering is important. Okay. Yes, Philip, your hand is up. You have a question? Um, um please, um, it is not clear. The page is not clear over here. Thank what, you. The what? What is not clear? The the FDF that you've uh, opened, I can't see. Uh, I can't see it well, please. It could be your network. Okay, so. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. I'm just demonstrating. I'm not. We've not started coding. I'm just demonstrating certain things. Okay, uh, Priscilla, your hand is up. Yes, sir. Sir, please, can you go over what you said earlier? What was I talking about? Yeah, what you said earlier, can you please go over it? Earlier, as in what? I said a lot of things, so which one? Yeah, about the editor. Okay, all right. Yes, Wilson. Um, please, uh, you were saying that um, the editor labels, which is the one, two, three, that's I'm seeing right there. Yes. And you are seeing uh, it labels the set of instructions. So can I replace the set of instructions with lines of code? Is said lines yes. of instructions? Yes, lines of code, lines of instruction, or lines uh, of statements. I, I, I said that based on the definition you gave for coding and programming, and that is the reason why I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, doing that. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. That room. In that room. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so uh, Priscilla, like I was saying, the editor is this interface which allows you to write your, your code or the lines of instructions. Okay, that is called the editor. So every ID has built within it an editor. This is the Dev C++ ID. Okay, it has built within it an editor. So the editor, 
is where you type your code or the instruction, whatever you want to write. But it should be based on the uh, language that the edit the the ID can take. Okay, like I said, the Dev C plus plus is for C and C plus plus programming, which are two different types of programming. Okay, now so you can write a lot of instructions here, and whilst you are writing, it is numbering them. Okay. It is numbering them. Now, the next thing we said the ID has is the, um, what we call the compiler, okay, the compiler. So for instance, if you look over here, there are some buttons here, okay? One is compile. Now, if we say compile, what it means is that whatever instruction or lines of code we've written here, let me just copy something from the handout and then paste it so that we can flow with it. So this is a bit bigger so everyone can see. So, Everything here, okay, or this entire interface we can see here is the editor, okay? So that's one part of the ID. Now, from this editor, we move to the other component, which is the compiler, okay? Every ID should be able to either compile or interpret a language. Okay, depending on which of the translators it decides to use. Okay, now with C++, C++ is a compiler-based language. Okay, so if it's a compiler-based language, that means it goes through some phases of translating whatever code you've written here into the form of zeros and ones or machine language so that um, you can get your output, okay? So, uh, like we said in our first lecture, there are evolution of programming languages, okay? They are generation, and the first generation is the machine language, the zeros and ones. Now, whatever code we've written here or program we've written here, the machine or your PC cannot understand this unless you translate it into zeros and one. And the compiler is what is going to translate it for you. Now it does that behind the scene, okay? It's a part of the ID which does the translation. And when it does the translation, it's going to check for error, syntax error, runtime error, and so on, okay, in the program. Okay. going to check for all that. Okay. So for instance, if you look here, there's what? There's the compile button. Okay. So when I click it, it runs. Okay, I have to save it first. Let me just save it on desktop. Okay. And then there's a compilation process going on down here. Let me just do a magnification so you can see what is going on down there, okay? So there's some form of text going on down here. Said C++ compiler. So here is looking at where the file was saved. Now the name of the compiler, that's the G++ compiler. That is what is compiling this. Then the compiling result or compilation result, error zero, one in zero, output file is given output size, so the size of the program is given, then the compilation time, okay? So how long it took to compile, that is to translate this text of code from um, what we're given to 
what you've typed into zeros and ones, okay? So that is it. Now, after compiling, it means that, okay, the machine now understands whatever instruction you've given it. Okay, it now understands, understands the instruction you've given it. That means that now it can give you the output you want. So the output could be that, okay, whatever you've typed here, you want to get an output of maybe six or five or something, okay? So you now use a button run, which will now run the code for you and then give you the output that you want, okay? So that's another layer. So if I click on the run button, it will now give me an output. Okay. So this is the output window. And we call this, we call this the terminal or the console. We call this the terminal or the console. So you can see the output of the code that I want. Now it has to first compile for the machine to understand before I can get my output, which is this. Okay, so this is called the terminal or the, uh, the console, okay, where you get your output. Okay, now it varies from ID to ID. Okay, so now we've talked about the uh, compile, the compiler, the editor, and then the console, okay. Then the debugger comes in when there is an error. Okay, when there is an error, you debug. Okay, so that option is there, which is also part of your ID. So which is also part of your ID. Okay, so you create projects and so on. Okay, so this is the Dev C plus plus ID, and this is what we'll be using for our C++ programming when we need to add the labs. Okay. All right. Um, Abraham Soa, uh, the breaking could be from your internet. Okay, so I'm sure. Um, Matthew Lamte. Matthew Lamte, your hand is up. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, go yeah, on. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I wanted to ask, like, to confirm that it's a mistake. You said the computer has a language that it understands. And I wanted to ask, how would we know that this this language we're giving to the computer, the computer doesn't understand so it starts? Yeah, so if it doesn't understand, it will give you a mistake. Now, every compiler is unique, OK? So, with this particular application, they build. Sir, please, I can't hear anything. Please, I've told you. If you have a question, you type it in the chat or you raise your hand. Don't interrupt when I'm trying to explain something. Hey, okay, Ford, if you can't hear, type it in your chat. I'm whilst lecturing. I'm reading the chats and watching the chats. The comments people are making. Okay. Already, your background is noisy. You are saying you can't hear. All right. So, um, back to Matthew, your question. Okay. So, every compiler has built into it its own. Um, has built into it uh, uh, or is designed based on the programming language uh, uh, grammar, okay? Like I said, you learn more of this when you do the top up. At the top up level, you learn for pilot design. Okay, for Mute your microphone, else I'll uh, take you out of the link of the class. Mm -hmm. So, the compiler has is built based on a particular language. So, every 
programming language has its own compiler or interpreter. Okay, every programming language has its own compiler and interpreter. The same way we have like English language, it has its own grammar. Okay, so you can't go and be writing English language in or an English essay inside a, a French speaking class. Okay, you can't go and be writing English grammar inside a French speaking class. It's wrong. Okay, so this compiler or this um, ID has built into it a C++ compiler. And it is that C++ compiler that will determine whether the, um, the code or the instructions that you've written here is correct or not. Okay, because there's a grammar behind it. There's, there's a grammar behind or which is built into the compiler. Okay, and like I said, you learn more of this when you do compiler design uh, during your top up, okay, top up level 300. Okay, so this is the compiler built into it. That's the TMD GCC compiler. Okay, that is what this ID is using to help you compile your C program. Now, for instance, if I take out this semicolon, okay, and then I compile, this will give me an error. And you can see the error message down here. This is giving me an error with an error message down here, okay? Now, the lines of code are very important, like I said earlier. Okay, it's important because for you to identify where the error is occurring, you need to take you to that line, okay, that the error is occurring, and then tell you what the error message is. However, if, so it says what, expected a semicolon before the int, and we took the semi, sorry, a semicolon before the int, okay, we took the semicolon from here. Okay, so if I go back and I compile again, this time it gives me what? Errors zero. Okay, it gives me errors zero. Why? Because the, um, because there's no error in the work, okay, or because the grammar follows, the grammar of the instruction I've typed follows whatever is being uh, compiled, okay, whatever the grammar of the compiler is, okay. All right. So this is for C++, uh, dev C++ environment. Let me go through the other environment quickly. Then this is VS Code, okay, VS Code, also an integrated development environment. Uh, VS Code is able to take uh, different languages, okay? So for instance, if you come here, we add them as extensions, okay? So VS Code, you can do your Java, you can do your Python in it, but however, you need to install those um, extensions. So if you look over here, there's Python here, okay? There's Python here. When I come down, there's C and C++, which I've not installed yet because I don't use this for, um, I don't use VS Code for my C and C++. However, if you want to use it, you have to install that extension and then what, which will automatically give you access to now write your C++ program in this environment. Okay, so with VS Code, it can, you can write many programming languages within it. However, you need to what, install those extensions and the interpreter and the compiler or the interpreter or the compiler should be configured before you can do that. Unlike the dev C++, it is already, it comes pre-installed, okay?
Okay, so you don't need to do that. Uh, it is already pre-installed. Okay, so this is VS Code. Then this is another interface, which is MATLAB. Okay, uh, I think at the top up level, you'll be introduced to this uh, programming language and software on this interface which is mostly used for mathematical and engineering related programs, okay? So it also has, now you can see about different, different windows, okay? Command window and so on, different, different windows. And this is also an ID you can run and so on, okay? Then we have here uh, what we call the IntelliJ which we use for our Java programming. We'll be using this next year when we start looking at Java, okay? So IntelliJ also is used for Java programming. This is the interface. Okay, uh, this, you create a new project. Create a new project. And then it gives you your interface, okay? Then there's the terminal. The terminal is where your program will run or the console, okay? So this entire IntelliJ software you see here is an ID. It has a compiler in it. It has a terminal or a console-based place to see your code. It has an editor, okay? So if you want the editor, uh, let me just create. We'll do this next year. We'll look at Java next year. Okay, so this is the editor interface. Now you can see with this one too, it's being numbered. Okay, so whatever code you type is going to be numbered for you. That's the editor. Okay, then that's, so this is for Java. Let me exit this, taking some space on the PC in memory. Okay. And then uh, last but not the least is code blocks. Code blocks is also um, an ID. Okay. Code blocks is also an ID, which is used for mainly Java program, but not only Java. It's used for Java, Fortran, and so, and so many other programming languages. Sorry, it's used for C++, Fortran, and C programming language, and some other languages, okay? Now, before you use this, you should have your, um, your compiler available, okay? So, for instance, let me just create a new project. Okay. You can use it for Arduino and so many other things. So let me just create a project here, uh, C++. Okay, let me do an empty project. Give it a title and then just create. That from here. It's not responding well, but we can also use this for uh, C++ programming, okay? So, so far I've introduced you to uh, five different IDEs, okay? Two or three of which can be used for C++ programming, okay? And there are so many of them, so many of them. Okay, so it's up to you and which one you are comfortable with. Okay, so at our level now, all our labs, we use the dev C++. Um, you can use code blocks too, if you are conversant with that one, and you can use your VS code also, if that's what you are conversant with. However, when you come to the department, uh, you can, Sorry, when you come to the lab, okay, the labs are the, the pieces are the computer lab. We use code, uh, we use dev C++, okay. 
All right. Um, so uh, two face, please stop writing on the screen and rename yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll consider you as absent because I don't have any person on my attendant list as two face. So please rename yourself. Yes, uh, Fred, you have a question? Yes, sir. All right, you can go Good. on while I go through the chat. So, I'm with C++. You have to install something on your PC before you run a code, unlike the JavaScript and Python. You have to install something like that before no. you can run a code. No, with the dev C++ and the code blocks, like I said, you don't need to install anything. Uh, they come with the compiler already built into them. Okay, so you don't need to do any additional installation. However, okay. when you are using the VS Code, like I showed you, VS Code is a general, it's, it's, a, it's an open platform for a lot of programming languages. Okay, so all you do is to search for the C++ extension, and then you install it. So, okay, I think I have it installed here already. So you install it, and then you can uh, uh, do the configuration and then use it for your C++ programming. Okay. okay. All right. So what of Sublime Test? Can you use that one? Uh, someone asked in the chat, so I'll, yeah. ask, I'll, I'll look at that. Okay. okay, Sublime Text is just an editor. It is not an IDE. Oh, okay. It is only an editor. So there are editors like that. There's notes, uh, Notepad++, plus plus. there's Sublime Text. Yeah. Those are editors, only editors. They don't have the compiler. They are, they are not IDE, so they don't have the compiler part of them, they are just there to edit the code. So usually what happens is that the editors, when you type the code, it breaks them into what we call tokens, which is what we are going to look at today. Oh, okay. So it's Thank not you. considered as an ID, it's just an editor. Okay, uh, the person named HP, please rename yourself before I allow you to ask your question. Uh, Michael Agbenyo. So please, I wanted to ask the ID is, do you need internet connection before they can work? No, 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 no. There are some that require internet connection, but what we are using is they are desktop application. You don't need internet. All you need is just to download it and install it. So okay, you thank you, it. sir. Okay. Uh, Husseini uh, Abdul. <laughs> So my question is uh, about the editors. Yes. Uh, like you said, is it all the editors that are, I, I learned you said is not all the editors that are ideal, for instance, uh, uh, VS Code or something. But I think with, with, with the extension in VS Code, it means uh, it's an ID, right? So VS Code is an ID. It's an environment okay. for writing code. Okay. But IDs differ. There are IDs that are specific to only maybe two programming languages. There are okay. IDs that can help you write multiple programming languages. However, you have to install the interpreter or the respective interpreter or compiler for that language before you can use it on the ID. So VS okay. Code, for instance, is an ID but you can't just go into it and start writing your C++ code if you have not installed the C++ the extension. The extension, exactly. Okay. okay. How about we... Atom, sir? Atom? Yeah, the Atom editor. Uh, I've not used it before, so I don't know much about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Thomas. Yeah, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, is Visual Basic Net an ID? 
Visual Basic dot net is yeah. it's a programming language. Visual Basic dot net is a programming language, but you can use the IDE which helps you to write the Visual Basic dot net programming language is the Visual Studio. You get it. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. We, I think we'll do that in level 200 second semester. Thank you. All right, John. John Ankara. John Ankara. All right, if John is not ready, let's go to SOA. Abraham SOA. I'm asking, I'm asking if you can use your phone, like you can install an ID on your phone. Yes, uh, there are some apps. When you go to the Play Store, you see some apps that can help you run the application. Now, those apps can only help you do the console-based application, which is good for what we are doing this semester and next semester. But when we get to level 200, the app on the phone cannot go further. Okay, but what we are doing in level 100, you can uh, just go and search. I don't... I don't do much of uh, programming on phone, so I don't know, but you can search. You get some that are good to use. Just look at the ratings and then you can decide which one to download. Okay. Um, Ernest. Okay, sorry. Yes. Please, I wanted to ask if um, do we have special types of computers or laptops for programming, or you can use any other computer for programming? So there, there's no like a particular uh, laptop for programming. Just that you should look at whatever you are doing, and that will determine the specs you should go for. Uh, what we are doing at this level, at least your laptop with an eight gig memory, and uh, I'll rather you go for an SSD. I okay, that should that should be okay. Okay, sir. The SSDs are usually faster than the HDD, so but your RAM should be at least eight gig. Okay, sir. That should be good to start with. Um, let me take the last question and then we move into the I'll look at the chats so uh, Richard yeah um, hello sir please I wanted to ask um, amongst all the IDEs which one do you suggest that we, we like we, st we stay on so that we don't end up changing IDEs from one place to the other um, I, I, I don't, for C++, I don't try to restrict you to a particular ID, okay? But like I was saying, for our class demonstration, practical demonstrations, I'll be using the Dev C++, okay? So you can use the Dev C++ because I feel with that one is simple. You don't need to do any configuration, once you install it, the ID is already installed. So um, you don't need to install any additional things again or any additional extensions again. Okay, so, and it's also uh, not that heavy a file. I think it's about five megabytes or less than 10 megabytes or so. Okay, so with C++, if you have their C++, that's fine. If you're also fine with the code blocks or VS code, that is fine. However, in exams, you'd all be using Dev C++. Okay, so uh, it's up to you to decide. It's up to you to decide. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. All right. So um, 
the last person here is David, David Amuaku. He'll be the last question we will take. So uh, let's go to Maxwell. Yeah, please. David, before you, I meant those who have raised their hand so that in case someone raised yeah, their hands again, someone. we won't consider that person. So David, you are the last person we will consider. Uh, so Benjamin, your hand was up, has been up for a while now. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, no, I just wanted to make a contribution. Uh, for the IDs, I'm sure is this, that's... Uh, is this Benjamin, part-time? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you brought your questions to the online session too. That's good. So, is it, is uh, it the Benjamin I know from part-time? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. That's yes, good. Yeah. Uh, okay, yes, I was saying that... Uh, uh, for the IDs, uh, I'm sure that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, them on the net. So if if you can just research, I mean, we will get a lot of them. You know, that, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Uh, Mary. Okay, sir, please. I wanted to ask, uh, we are supposed to be using the DevC++ class. Okay. So is there a possibility we can download it on our phones? So like I'm saying, I don't know if it's a mobile version, but when you go into oh. the Play Store, you see other applications which other, yes, other applications you can use for, uh, for C++. I think someone okay. asked earlier. Okay. So you can just... Thank you get that and then try them out but always look for the ones with the best ratings okay yeah and download them okay. yeah okay. and uh, you're welcome so we take the last question from david amuako all right sir please my question is uh, i use the book to try the liners so i get the same the features are talking of like the same features on the Ubuntu because they also are using, are using the Windows and I use the Ubuntu. So I want to know if I will get the same features on the Ubuntu to as well. Thank you. All right. Yes, you get the same features. Once it's the same institution or uh, the same uh, uh, company that's designing the application, once you get the Ubuntu version, uh, you should be able to use it, uh, you still see the same features. Just the only difference you see is the uh, change of interface. Okay, however, everything should be the same because okay. they do more with the terminal. Okay, so okay. Okay. like I said, you can just Google. So if you can see on the screen, you can just Google DevC++. And then you see the ID there, download it. Uh, I'm using the version 5.11. Okay, so if you can go for that version. All right, so all questions hold for now. Uh, while we continue, we'll come back to the questions. So there were some comments in the chat. Let me address some of them if I've not mentioned them already. I think I've addressed the sublime text one. Uh, so please, you said the compiler, interpreter checks and debugging comes in when an error, uh, when an error, please, is there any difference? <laughs> Is there any difference there? I um, don't get the question very well, though. Bugs, bugs are error. So if you are debugging, it means you are checking for error and then correcting the error in the program. Okay. So it's all part of the concept of programming. Um, Um, 
Okay. So those are same for the type of IDs. There are a whole lot of them. I think Benjamin Bernard has listed some of them. So you can see that. Uh, all right. Okay. So I don't think there's any major question which I've not addressed. You don't need to learn any other programming before learning C++. Okay, like I said, it's always best you start learning the difficult one. And then when you transition into the other ones, it's, it's easier. Okay. All right, so let's continue back to our handouts. Um, so like I said, our focus today is on the basic elements of programming. And what are these basic elements? Okay. Now, uh, there's this code here, example 3.1. Okay. This is the code I copied and pasted in the dev C++, okay, as we can all see here. Okay. Now, this is a complete C++ program, which has, or which has in it some elements. Okay, which has in it some elements. Okay. Now, if you look at the first part of the code, there's this two forward slash, and then there's a star, star, star. Then the next line also has two forward slashes. And then it says what? This is a simple C++ program. It displays four lines of text including uh, the sum of two numbers, okay? Then line four says double forward slash star, 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 okay? So if you look at this part of the code, even the color should tell you that they are something similar, okay? Now, when we come here, line five, you can tell that the color looks different. It's green. Okay, the color looks different. And it's saying here, hash include. Okay. Then when we come here to line six, it's saying using namespace. Now, when you look at it carefully, this using namespace is bold. Even though it's black, it is bold. However, this is not bold, but it's also black. Then we have a red here. Okay. Now, when we come to line seven, the int is bold, the main is not bold, but it's black. And then we have a red uh, bracket. Okay. Then we have the open and close bracket. Now, when we come to line nine, you can see all the text. Now, the numbers being written here has a different color, a purple in color. Okay. Now, when we come here to there's a text which is blue in color. Okay, here we've written numbers again. However, these numbers are not like the purple one we have here. Okay, but they are also blue. Okay, so what does all this code here mean? That is what our focus this semester is about. I'm sorry, this tonight is about all this code here we've written here. What does it mean? How can we differentiate the basic elements within this? sample code we have on our screen, okay? So back to our handout, okay? Now it says, when you run the code, it said you compile and execute this program. The following lines of code are displayed. Okay, I think we did that. So let me run and compile and let's see what it was talking about. Okay. So when we run the code, it says my first C++ program, that's the output. Okay. Now let me put it here so that you can see it side by side, what is showing. Okay. So it says 
my first C++ program, and then it outputs it, my first C++ program. Then it says the sum of two and three is equal to. Now, you can see here that we didn't write five, okay? But when you go further, it says the sum of two and three is equal to five. Then it says seven plus eight equals, then over here, it does what? Seven plus eight. And that is given as 15. Then here it said num equals, now it referenced num here. And the value of num here was earlier assigned a value of six. Okay, so if you go back, it says what? Num equals six. Okay, now let's take these lines of code. Um, or let's take this code line by line okay. <laughs> and see how we can understand uh, each of them okay so <laughs> all right so it says here that these lines are displayed by the execution of three statements. Okay, so anytime you see C out, it means output. Now I'll give you the synonyms. Output is the same as um, print, display, okay, uh, print, display. Okay, what else did we mention? Right. Okay, so in C++ programming, anytime you see C out, okay, it means print or display. Now, what is this printing? This is printing this statement or this text here. This is my first program. That's how come we saw it printed out here as what? My first C++ program. Okay, so it's printing out the same text we see here. Then the end L, which means end line. What it means is that it should end the line and then the next output, which is this, should move to the next line. So you see that after each of them, we put end L there. After each of the printouts, we put end L there. We do that so that the next set of statement can be sent or uh, printed out on the next line, okay? So the next line has what? The sum of two and three, which is this. The sum of two and three is equal to, now we have five here, so it's equal to five. Then we have C out again, what are we seeing out? The text seven plus eight. Now that seven plus eight, we said it's equal to, it's equal to what? Now we do the configuration of the value seven plus eight itself, and then it gives us 15, okay? Now, it says here that It says here that this is an example of a C++ output statement. Okay, it causes the compiler, the computer to execute, uh, sorry, to evaluate the expression after the pair of symbols. That's the double um, less than symbols, okay? And it displays the result on the screen. Usually, a C plus plus program okay. contains. Oh, we can't wait for the the entire. You know, let me. There's usually the C plus plus program contains various types of expressions such as arithmetic and strings. Okay, now the seven plus eight, which we saw. Is an arithmetic expression. Okay. 
Then the string form is where you put it in the double quote, in the double quotation mark. Okay, so this is a string. Anything you see in a double quotation mark is, is a string. So all the blue that we see here, which is bold. Now this blue is different from the ones on top. Okay, so the bold ones we see here, what they do is that they are the strings because they are in the double quotation mark. Okay, the double quotation mark. We call them strings. Okay, so this is a string. This seven plus eight equal to is a string. So what happens is that anytime you do C out and you put a string in it, it will print out the same thing for you. That's how come we can see from our output that what we have seven plus eight being printed here. Okay, seven plus eight is equal to, that's the same thing. Now this other seven plus eight here is an arithmetic expression. Okay, so this is actually doing the calculation of seven plus eight, which is giving us the 15. Okay, so the handout is saying that the program has two types of expression or various types of expression. There's an arithmetic and then there's a string. Okay, now let's go down here. It says also take notes, uh, notes that. In the output statement, the NL causes the insertion point to move to the beginning of the next line, okay, which I explained earlier. So you can see that after every statement, there's NL, which is causing the statement to move to the next line, okay? Hey, some people just joined to disturb the class. All right, so I've removed him. Don't worry. When he joins again, we'll remove it. It's just unfortunate he didn't type his real name. All right, so. So there's another output which says this output consists of two expressions. Okay, so as we can see here, it's seeing out, okay, or it's printing out the sum of two and three equals. Now this is in a double quote, okay? Now the sum of two and three equals, which is the first expression, okay, is a string. It is also a string. It is also a string, okay? And then the second expression here. Now you can see that they are all being separated with a, a double less than sign. Okay, so the second expression here, which is five, is a number, okay? So a numeric value, five. So what it's trying to say is that when you add two and three, you get five. Okay, the sum of two and three is five. Okay, so it's just a numeric value, okay? Then when we go further down, I think I've explained this already. We have, we have another output which says C out num equals. Now this num equals is also a string because it's in the double, quotation mark, okay? And then it have by it a variable. We we'll look at all these elements shortly. It has by it a variable, okay? So this variable is what we call, uh, or this variable is being assigned a number. And that number that it was assigned is six, okay? 
So when it's printed out, it will say num is equal to six because this six was assigned earlier to the variable. As we can see, uh, let me just go back. As we can see over here, first, we declare the variable num as integer. Okay. So we declare the variable. Now, if you remember from the algorithm and flowchart, the algorithm and flowchart, I mentioned the word declare. Okay. Declaration means you are uh, defining a variable. So in this case, we have declared the variable int, sorry, the variable num as an integer. So int here means integer. Okay, we'll talk about the various values shortly. Then in the next, that's line 10, what we are doing is initialization. Okay, so we have initialized the variable. What does it mean to initialize the variable? Initialization means that you have assigned a value, okay? You have assigned a value six to the variable num, okay? If I assign the value six to the variable num, okay? We have assigned a value six to the variable num. So we call this initialization. So when you declare, it means that you take what we call the data type, which we'll talk about shortly, and then the variable, which is num. So this is called declaration. The initialization is when you assign, using the assignment operator, you assign a value. So in this case, six is being assigned to the variable six, which is initialization. Okay, likewise, you can do it at the same time. You can, you can decide to take off line 10 and then do int six, int num equals six, which is also accepted. So in this case, you are declaring and initializing at the same time, okay? All right. Then there was a statement which says return zero. Now return zero, it uh, returns the value zero to the operating system when the program ends. So at the end of the statement, you see a value there, which is, sorry, which is return zero, okay? Then there's the hash include IO stream. Okay, now in every C++ program, or in every programming language, let me put it that way, you either include or import some packages, which we call libraries, okay? Now, the IO stream we see here, the I means input, the O means output. Now the stream is the process of, um, is a process of uh, manipulating your data in terms of input and output, okay? So without this, your application or the program that we just ran cannot uh, give us an input or cannot take in an input and then give us an output without this IO stream, okay? So because every program or like we saw from algorithms, you need an input for you to process it to get the output. That is how come we have the IO stream. Okay, so the stream, the stream basically means the flow of data in your program, the flow of data. So inputs and outputs stream. Yes. Okay. Then we have the using namespace, okay. Um, I'll leave this for you to go and read further on, okay? Why we have the using namespace. Okay. 
okay, to use to go and read more on it using namespace std and then come with some response. Then we have the int main. So this is the last thing I'll talk about, the int main. Now the int main is, um, now it's, it's like when you are writing essay, okay? Anytime you are writing essay in English, you have what we call the, um, the introduction part of the essay, the body, and then the conclusion, okay? Now, the int main over here, the focus is on the main, okay? The main is like the body of your program. That is where the program is being executed. Without the main, we call it method or function. Without the main method, your program cannot run, okay? Your program cannot be executed, okay? So going forward, you get to realize that anytime we write a program, we write it inside the main method, okay? We'll be writing it in the main method. And in fact, if we want to implement our algorithms, most often than not, we are going to implement them inside our main method. So algorithm to convert maybe Celsius to Fahrenheit to complete the algorithm, we need to write it inside the main method and then we run it. Without the main method, we can't execute or run our algorithm, okay? Now, this is how the main method looks like. Now, you've seen here that I've collapsed it, okay? The main method always starts with, uh, please hold on. All right, so uh, let's continue. Okay, so like I was saying, the main method is like the body of the program. Now, anytime you introduce the main, you should introduce these two curly brackets, the open and close curly bracket. Now, you see that when I select the first curly bracket, the uh, closing, the opening one, the closed one is also the opening one, the closed bracket is also selected. Okay, the closed bracket is also selected. And then you see this line from line eight all the way to 16. All the way to 16. Okay, as we can all see. So everything within here is what we call the um, is what constitutes your program or the execution of your algorithm. Everything here, okay, from line nine all the way to fifteen, constitutes the algorithm that we are going to be implementing. And we'll do that in here, inside the main method, okay? So most of the program we'll be writing, especially this semester, we'll be doing everything inside the main method. However, these ones will remain the same. Line five and line six will remain the same, okay? Just that if we need to include more features or more libraries, then we'll do that. Okay, however, this is where we'll be implementing our algorithm. Okay. All right. So what are these tokens? 
Okay, you can read more on them. What are these elements in programming? Okay. I'll talk about them briefly and then we can end. Uh, we'll continue to look at them next week. Okay. Now, there are about seven elements okay, in programming. The first is the comments. Okay, every programming language has what we call comments. Okay, now we said programming language is a set of rules, symbols, and special words. Every programming language takes comments. Then after the comments, we have special symbols. Special symbols, which are also another element. Then we have reserved words. So there are some words that are reserved or we also call them keywords, okay? They are reserved or keywords. Then we have what we call identifiers, which is another element, identifiers. And then we have white spaces, okay? Now, if you look at the code very well, you can see that there are some spaces in there, okay? Which are also important parts of the code. So they are also considered as elements in the code and then we have data type okay which we will spend our time next week to look at uh, very well okay i'll share material with you on that okay then we have the operators and the operator precedence the operators and operator precedence okay all right so let's go back and look at the elements uh, starting from comments and what they are okay. now it says that the program that you write should be clear okay not only to you but also to the reader of your program now if you notice when we talked about algorithms we said the same thing that your algorithm should be clear not only to you, but also to what? The person who is going to implement the algorithm, okay? Now, a good part or a, a part of good programming is the inclusion of comments. Now, I've selected this, this statement, very, very important. It said, part of good programming is the inclusion of comments in a program, okay? Every good programmer has comments in his program. Now, what are these comments? These comments can be used to identify the author of the program. It can be used to give the date when the program is written or modified or give a brief description of the program and explain the meaning of key statements in your program, okay? So that shows that comments are very, very important. They are necessary. You must always include them in your program, okay? Now it says the comments are for the reader, not for the compiler. Take note of these statements. The comments, are for the reader, not the compiler. That is to say that the compiler doesn't compile the comments. However, these comments are there for the person reading the code to understand what the code is about, okay? So it says, when a compiler compiles a program to check for syntax error, it completely ignores the comments. It completely ignores the comment, okay? Now, if you look at line one to line four, okay, it's a typical example of a comment. Okay, it's a typical example of a comment. Now, this comment here, you can see I've put plenty of asterisks here. Because I've started with this double forward slash, the compiler will see it as a comment. It is not for the compiler to translate. It is just there for 
the program or the reader of the program. So anyone who sees this code would first see the comment, and the comment says that what this is a simple C++ code. It displays four lines of text, including the sum of two numbers. Simple. Okay. So it's just here to describe the code and what is happening. It's not meant for the compiler to compile. It's not meant for the compiler to compile. It's just describing the code, okay? Helping the reader understand the program, okay? All right, okay. so let's read further. Now it says, this is a C++ program. It prints the sentence, welcome to C++ programming, okay? Now there are two common types of comments, okay? In C++, we have the single line comment, and then we have the multiple line comment. Now, how do we write a single line comment? We begin the single line comment with a double forward slash. Okay, just like we can see in our code. Sorry. That's why we can see here. This is a comment. So this is a single line comment. This is a single line comment. Line one to line four are examples of single line comments. So we do that with a simple uh, the forward slash, two of them. Okay, once you do that, it makes the statement coming after it a comment. Okay, so for instance, if I want to take one of my printouts out and I don't want the compiler to print it and I do this, what it means is that I've made line 13 a comment. So when the compiler is compiling or translating my code, when it gets to line 12, it to compile it and then skip line 13 and go to line 14 and compile because I've made, because of this double forward slash, I've now made line 13 a comment, not a code to be compiled. I've made it a comment. Okay, I've made this line 13 a comment. So this line 13 is no longer a code that will be compiled for the machine to understand, okay? However, if I take it out, it becomes a code which will be compiled, okay? So for instance, when I do this and I decide to run my code again, let me run, close, compile and run again. Just a moment. So now you can see that because I commented that part of the code, the output, which says the sum of two and three, after running it again, is taken out. Please don't write on the screen. That part has been taken out of my output because it is a comment. It is only there for the reader, not for the compiler to compile. So that aspect of the code is omitted or is taken out. Okay. All right, so let's look at the next thing there. Then we have the multiple line comment. Multiple line comment. So they are used or the multiple line comments are enclosed between the forward slash with the asterisk and then asterisk before the forward slash. So you start with asterisk, forward slash, 
then asterisk, and then asterisk before forward slash. So like this one, this is a typical example of a multiple line comment, okay? So if I go back to the code, I can change my line three, line one to line four, to a multiple line comment, just by deleting all this, and then doing my forward slash one of it. Okay, now you can see that everything here has changed into a comment, okay? Because I've not closed it with the asterisk and then forward slash. So once I do the asterisk forward slash, it makes what line one to line four, a multiple line comment. Now I can take this part off. And then line one to line four is now a multiple line comment because of this, okay? So these are the two, line, two types of comment in C++. These are the two types of comments in C++, okay? Now let's talk about special symbols. Let's talk about special symbols. Okay. So with the special symbols, it says they are the smallest individual unit of a program written in any language. Okay. Or the special, uh, the smallest symbol, uh, individual unit of a program written in any language is called a token. Okay, if you learn compiler design, you hear more, if you read on compiler design, you see this word token. Okay, that's the first stage of compilation. Your code is broken into what we call tokens. Okay, we call it tokenization. Now, C++ tokens are divided into what we call the special symbols, word symbols, and the identifiers. Okay. Now, what are these special symbols? The plus, minus, multiplication, forward slash, semicolon, question mark, the operators, less than or equal to, and so on. Okay. Now, if you go back into our code, everything you see in red, on this platform, it's an example of a special symbol. Okay, everything you see in red is an example of a special symbol. Now, the color formatting you see on this editor is will be different when you use uh, code blocks. Code blocks have its own uh, color scheme. Now it's an editor, so you can always go into the editor and change how the colors should look like, okay? So these colors you are seeing here will be different if someone is working in code blocks, will be different if someone is working in, let's say, uh, uh, how do we call it? Someone is working in, say, uh, Visual uh, VS Code, okay? It's going to be different, okay? Uh, Emmanuel Saki, please stop drawing on the screen. Mm -hmm. Stop drawing on the screen or kindly undo whatever you've done. All right. So uh, let's continue. Okay. So these are all special symbols. Okay, so you can read on it. It said the first row are mathematical symbols. Okay, then the second row consists of punctuation marks taken from English grammar. So full stop, semicolon, comma, it question is, mark. It is two. Second, second one, the first one. Well, well, we'll okay. Then we have the uh, third line, which has to do with uh, the uh, relational operators, which we saw last week and last two weeks from uh, algorithms. Okay, these are all special symbols. Okay. Then we have reserved words. So today I'll end on reserved words. Okay. Next week we'll look at the other elements. So reserved words. 
reserved words are also known as keywords. Okay, so every programming language, every programming language has some form of word that are key or reserved. Okay, they are reserved words. They are key words. You don't use them just like that. Now it says this is the second category of tokens. This is the second category of tokens. Some of these reserved words are int, float, double, par, const, void, return, a whole lot of them. A whole lot of them. Next week, I'll share with you a document which shows all the reserved words in C++. Okay. Now, let's go back to that program. Now, in Dev C++, okay, all the black text that are in that are black, okay, and are bold are all reserved words or keywords in using namespace uh, return black and bold. They are all keywords or reserved words, okay, and they all begin with a small letter. They all begin with small letters, lowercase, float. They all begin with lowercase. So always note them. Okay. So go and read on reserved words in C. You see a whole lot of them, and they all begin with lower cases. Okay. So today we've talked about three elements of a basic C program or a simple C program. We've talked about the comment. We've talked about the symbol and the reserved words. We've also looked at IDs and what they are. We've talked about editors. We've talked about compilers. We've talked about the terminal. And then we've looked at the a sample C++ program. If you have any question, you can raise up your hand. Uh, I'll take only 10 questions because of time. All right, so I'll start with those in the chat first before I come to. All right, so uh, let me see if there's any question in the chat. So who is V underscore shop? Who is Bishop? Please let me know your full name so that I can address your question. Okay. Uh, the special symbols don't have a particular function, okay? Each special symbol has, so Charles, is it Brainsley? Each special symbol has its role it performs. So there's not like a particular function for a special symbol. A symbol can be arithmetic symbol for mathematical calculation. It can be punctuation from English, which are used to perform certain functions in a program. Okay, so there is not like one function for all the special symbols. Okay. All right. Uh, please, Bishop, please rename yourself. Rename yourself. But I don't, I'll consider you absent when I'm checking the attendance. So rename yourself as much as possible. Don't send the message directly. Send it so that everyone can read it in the chat and then we will explain it.
All right, so let me take the questions. Uh, I'll start with Husseini, and then I'll end with uh, Kelvin, Gelly Kelvin. So Gelly Kelvin will be the last question you will take for today. Okay, Husseini, your hand is up. Sir, please, uh, regarding the comments, I saw you writing the double forward slash. Mm -hmm. And then is it because at line 13, I believe, on the interface? Yes. Is it is it because the comments didn't, uh, it just ended on line 13 or that's why you didn't introduce the other, the other forward slash at the end? So I said there are two types of comments. Okay. There is a single line comment and okay. there is the multiple line comment. Okay. So what I've done in line 13 is a single line comment. So I want to comment this entire statement. Okay. This entire instruction is a single line comment. So I do the double forward slash. Then it comments everything in this line. You get it? Yes. So that's a single line comment. And this is the multiple line comment. Okay. This is Thank how you. you introduce the multiple line one. All right. Okay. Uh, let's take Luis Obey. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my question is uh, about the comment. Uh, there is um, a tag, an open tag, and then a close tag. And then the open tag is um, the less than um, symbol and then an exclamation mark with a slash. And then the close tag is a slash two slash with uh, with um, a greater than um, um, symbol. That one is for comment. But here you use the. Wait, wait, wait. Can you repeat yourself again? Okay. So my question is um, with the comment, we have an open tag and then a close tag. That is what I know. And then the, um, the open tag is the less than. Um, symbol and then with an exclamation mark with a slash and then the close tag uh, Obin William, Obin Luis yes okay. we have different programming languages oh okay. okay so the fact that you know how to speak Spanish and you find yourself in an English speaking country doesn't mean that you should speak Spanish to everyone you see in an English speaking country. Yeah. You get me? Yes. Okay. So if you are doing HTML and you have your open and closed tag. Okay. Doesn't mean that the same should apply to all programming languages. Oh, okay. You get me? Yes, please. Okay. So in C, this is how you do it we do the comment yes every language has its own way of writing comments okay okay sir you get it yes please okay okay thank you you're welcome uh emmanuel Eshen. hello yes <laughs> i i don't have a question i just wanted to say uh, a little something about the namespace. Okay. Uh, reserve that. It's a it's a, 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 a question I've given to you all. So if you know, you just reserve it for uh, our next meeting. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, Abraham Sowa. I wanted to ask. Uh, oh, uh, hold on. Do you have you have a the part timers? You have a class, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So you can log off and then join your other class. I'm sorry. Okay. I okay. totally okay. forgot. Okay. I thought we were doing three hours. Oh, so okay. you can log off and join your class. I'll share the video with you so that you can hear people's questions and the response. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. So thank you so much. Bye. Okay.
Okay. So, if Abraham, you can ask your question if you are not. At I, I wanted to ask um, with the number one, you, you, you started with for it slash slash then what's the meaning of that star 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 it's just a a design style it has no oh. significance okay it's just a design style because it's a comment and the compiler would not compile it it will skip it so in fact your comment you can write whatever you want there okay. it won't affect the code in any way However, what you are writing there should be something meaningful, something that anyone seeing your program should read and understand. Okay. okay. All right. All right. You're welcome. Right. Uh, let's take um, Jonas. In three, Jonas. Yeah, uh, sir. Please, my question is, um, in your interface, if you omit any operator or special ways, are you going to um, arrive at an output yeah, resource or maybe output in a form of error or something? Yes, yeah, so all that we have here are playing some significant role, okay? Like I said, every programming language has its own grammar. Just like we learned from the first lecture, that what there is uh, when I try to compare the grammar in English language and French and all that, natural languages have their grammar, they follow. Okay, English language, you have to follow a particular grammar. If you don't follow it well, when your lecturer is marking your essay, communication skills is marking your essay, you circle something meaning there's an error within, you are using he have instead of he has, okay? You circle it the same way in writing a program, in this case, C++, there's a grammar or a structure, a syntax you are supposed to follow. So if you don't follow that syntax, the machine will not understand it. So if you omit, let's say I omit this int from here and I okay. have, Okay. Okay, sir. It may compile. Okay. If I omit maybe something else and compile, it gives me an error. Okay. Okay. So there are rules or structures you are supposed to follow, syntax okay. you are supposed to follow. And that is what we are moving into by looking at the elements. Then we will now go and write the programs to follow those structures or syntax. <clears throat> all right. Uh, okay, okay so it's clear now. Thank all you. Right. All right. Uh, this number I'm seeing here is not ATU's number. Okay, so I'll skip that person and go to Mike Matthew Lampe. Please rename yourself if you are using your student ID. Use the A to use student ID we all know. Okay. Yes, Michael. I'm sorry, Matthew. Yeah, sir. I wanted to ask about um, the, the, the symbols. Is it the comment? You see, when we're doing the, is it a two, the, the, the line two, you, 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 you did the comment, which is a double reason, a double comma, something like that. I don't know how it is. Oh, is that, it? That symbol. Double forward slash. Yeah, you, you use a double mm -hmm. forward slash. And when the, mm -hmm. the sentence was continuing, before you went to line three, you also used another double forward slash. Is it, is it compulsory that you, have, you always have to do it like that? Or you can, you can continue just straight ahead? So we've said there are two types of comments. There's a single line comment and there's multiple lines, okay? Yeah. If you are writing more than one line, okay? So for instance, I have something else to type here. I have something else to type here, okay? This is an example of multiple line comment. Why? Because I've started this forward slash with the asterisk here and I've ended it here. So anything I write within it is seen as a comment, okay? However, 
if it's a single line comment, I have to do this forward slash double of it for each line. For each line. So imagine if I have, imagine if I have about 10 lines, I have to be doing this for all of them. Right? So that's the difference between the two. Okay, so instead of doing this for using the single line comment for all of them, I just use this to handle all the multiple line values, as you can see here. Okay, okay, sir. All right. Uh, okay. You're welcome. So Kelvin is supposed to be our last question, but I see two more hands. So you, I'll take, let's take Kelvin and then we'll take Christian and Ishmael. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, please, um, for the keywords, uh, I mean the reserve words, mm -hmm. um, you use um, int. I want to ask, see um, the line seven, you use the int word, mm -hmm. the line, and the other line, you use the same. I want to ask if you can use Keywords in the same um, program writer. If you want to write it, you can use the two keywords. Yes, you can use as many as you want. As many as as I many, want. yeah. Okay, and I want to ask if um, they all mean the same thing. No, they are playing a particular role in the program. Okay, it's like you are making a sentence and you are saying he 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 is this. The next statement, you say he has three cars. The next statement, the car is his car, or he has three dogs. The next statement, he has five days. You are repeating the he several times. Once it makes sense, there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. So uh, Christian, so Christian and then Ishmael. Fred, <coughs> keep your question for next week. Okay, our time is fast spent. Christian. Okay, sir. Yes. Uh, please, you said uh, the NL is for ending the line. Yes. But the line three, we have a full stop there. Only the line 18 has NL for the comments. So is it compulsory for, uh, for us to use NL for the comments? Come again. Repeat your question again. We have and L for line 18, but we don't have N L for uh, line one, two, three, and four. But we have oh. to stop there. So if you omit the N L, will it affect the list in the comments? Okay. So if you followed what we said, okay, and our advice you go and read the handout one. Now I'm lecturing, so I don't have to read everything for you and explain. Okay, that's how why you have the handout. So you take your time and read it. Now, the end L, which is end line, okay, is used anytime you perform an output, which is the C out. So you can look at the code very well. We've not used it anywhere again, only places where you see C out, line 13 to line 15. That is the only place the end line is used. Because the end line, if you read the material, it says it prints out a text and moves to the next line. Okay, so after printing my first C++ program, this end line will move the statement to the next line. For instance, let me just take the end line off and see what will happen. It's going to print line 13 and line 12 and line 13 on the same line, or it will output that text on the same line, okay, which is something we want to avoid. Okay, I think someone asked a question about escape sequence in the chat. Okay, we'll get to escape sequence. We'll talk about that next week. Now you can see here, my first program, my first C++ program, then it continues to say that what the sum of two and three is five. Why? Because I removed the end line, which is supposed to break 
the first line 12 and line 13 into two different lines. Christian, do you get it? Yes, please. Uh, so the end line is not like we are adding it to every line. We add it only when we are performing an output. That's the C out. C out means we want to output. We we'll look at the C in. C in is for input. C out is for output. So anytime we are performing output and we don't want the values to be on the same line, we separate them or we move the values to the next line by using the end else. Okay. However, there's escape sequence, which we are going to explore more. We'll look at it next week and we'll explore them in our program. Okay. All right. So I'm taking the last question, which is Ishmael. Ishmael Kofi. Fred, like I said, we'll take your question next week. So please note it down. Ishmael. Ishmael Kofi. Ishmael Kofi. All right. So Ishmael doesn't have a question. Uh, Fred, if you are here, we can take your question since Ishmael is not ready to ask. Yeah. Not ready. Oh, my brother, you can't do that too. Keep your question. Ishmael, keep your question for next week. Okay, you ask that. Let's do it. Uh, you say this with a design style, is it really composite? With what? The design style. What do you mean by the design style? The hashtag, the, uh, uh, the star sign. Yeah. Yes. It's not like is it compulsory. It is the grammar. Like I keep saying, it is how you write or how you start a C++ program. Oh, uh, okay. So if you notice, we are performing outputs, okay? And without yeah. this IO stream, which is, I said, is the input and output stream, we can't perform any outputs, okay. okay? The stream means the flow of data in your program. And the data comes in the form of input and in the form of output. So we have to include this IO stream. And this is how we include, we call them libraries. We'll talk about them next week. We call them libraries. There are so many of them. Okay, so for all the libraries, this is how you include them. So there is the IO stream library. There is the mass library. If you want to perform mathematical computation, there's a mass library. Anytime you want to include them, this is how you write it. Okay, so this is okay. IO stream. There are other streams. If you go to Java, Java has its own way of including the libraries or packages. Okay, like Java is import, Python, you import, and so on. So every language has its own grammar, its own style of writing it. Yes. All right, so Thank you, sir. you're welcome. Uh, so we'll end today's class here. Um, I don't know if you've done the online registration for the LMS. Okay, so uh, I'll give you another grace period to do that uh, by close of this week, if you have not registered. Um, what's this? So the... I think it's my net ATU my net. So when you log in, you see an interface like this, and you should see fundamental of computer program. You see all the five or the six or seven courses you are offering. Then you see fundamental of computer programming. So I'm going to put all the materials you need in the quiz here. Okay. So please make sure you have access to it. And then all the material. Next week, I'll be using a particular slide which explains our topics we'll be discussing next week. Okay, I'll put it here for you. 
So make sure you have access and then you download it for our class next week. So I'm working on the platform for computer programming. Once it's ready, I will let your class reps and then they'll communicate that with you. And we'll be having the quiz too here. Okay, so please make sure you have registered and you have access to the virtual classroom platform. That's the LMS. Okay. All right. Um, I think that will be it for today. Um, if, if you have any question, anything troubling you, you can always come around. If I'm not there, the TA will be there to attend to you. If it's beyond him, um, you alert me and then we'll see how best we can address your issues. <laughs>